Hi, my name is Katherine Vandell. I'm a jewelry specialist with Doyle based in Florida. I'm here in our new beautiful gallery space in Palm Beach. And Doyle is thrilled to be offering three magnificent pieces of Rene Lalique jewelry in our upcoming October 21st important jewelry auction. Rene Lalique is best known for his glass creations, works that aided by exposure from massive architectural collaborations with the Normandy luxury liner and Cote d'Azur Pullman Express carriages went on to define the Art Deco movement. Lalique's aesthetic became the vocabulary of Art Deco, echoed across common articles like light fixtures, cocktail shakers, perfume bottles, and car hood ornaments. Even so, Lalique's designs in glass represent the second and arguably less impressive half of his career when compared to his jewelry masterpieces of the late 19th and early 20th century. During the Art Nouveau period, Lalique was designing jewelry with sinuous metalwork, organic color and material compositions, and fantastical dimensional designs often inspired by the flora and fauna of his native Champagne, France. Lalique began his career as a freelance artist working for established houses like Boucheron and Cartier. Lalique's jewelry pieces elevated previously disdained materials like sard, jasper, coral, opals, and horn at a time when jewelry was intended to be a symbol of wealth conveyed via gold, pearls, diamonds, and precious stones. From the beginning, his interest was in translating perspective and depth, often resulting in designs deemed too avant-garde for the more traditional houses. By 1890, Lalique had established his own atelier and gained the attention of the intellectual elite and fashion-forward socialites, artists, and performers alike. Patronage from the actress Sarah Bernhardt, for whom Lalique made massive stage adornments, helped him ascend to even greater notoriety. Lalique's preview at the Exposition Universelle in 1900 marked what is now considered the peak of his jewelry career. His contemporary and fellow jeweler, Henri Verver, summarized Lalique's widely discussed and critiqued Exposition Universelle display, saying, thanks to Lalique, the bijou has once again become an art object. Jewelry as bijou could, through the beauty of workmanship, the originality of its artistic form and composition acquire a value far superior to that of the precious materials employed. The leak's focus shifted from jewelry to glass when in 1909 he opened a glass factory at Combe la Ville near Paris. Three years later, he would put on his last jewelry show. It is common belief that the change was due in some part to a gradual loss of his close eyesight which made the small work of jewelry very difficult. Vivere noted that Lilique exploited in his effort to give form to life of animals and plants, to their germination and birth, blossoming and maturity, and final withering, every technical resource offered by enamel, with its exceptional chromatic range and natural rapport with gold, silver, diamonds, and colored stones. His preference was plique jour enamel because it allowed light to pass through it, thus giving a piece life and movement.